Welcome back. I'm so happy that you are here today. This is the You Can with Suzanne show, and that would be me. I am Suzanne Sue Can. Because if Sue Can, you can too. Woohoo! As always, I am so excited, ever so excited. I'm going to get right into my little story. You always have to open with a little story. This one is kind of like a spiritual story. Uh, now, my dad passed away almost two years ago, and um, so just the other day, oh, I guess I got to tell you the backstory. I grew up on a fishing boat. Dad was always, dad was a fisher, and he worked on the tugboats with his dad. And so uh, he had a little fishing boat, and he would get bigger and bigger boats as he got older and more established. And so when he passed away, my intuition said that he was over Bocart's small boat harbor, because that's always where he docked his boat. So now, every time I go over the Skyway, I always say, hi, Dad, all the time. So last Thursday, I am driving to the Buffalo, the world premiere of the Lance Diamond, Diamond and the Buff movie. It's not released yet, but I saw it. It was awesome, and we'll get to that a little later. Um, anyway, so I'm driving over the Skyway, and I did my usual, hi, Dad, and I start talking to him, and I'm like, you know, I haven't heard from you in a bit. And, and you know, you can come and let me know that you're here, say something, I'm paying attention. Well, guess what happened? So I'm driving, my hand's on the steering wheel, my other hand's on the shifter, and I got this pain in the tip of my finger. And I don't have arthritis or anything like that, so this was really weird. I, it, it was like attention getting pain. And so I'm like, oh, what's that? And I look at my hand and I raise my finger like this, and just as I do this, a bird flew over right where I was pointing and like looped around as I was driving. Wow, huh? So thanks, Dad. <laughs> yes, I believe in angels. <laughs> All right, so there's my little story. I'm so excited. I really am. And I have to stop saying that, but it's true. Uh, goodness gracious. Well, let me think. What's on my mind is domestic violence. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. I'm working on behind the scenes. I'm going to get to a free self-defense workshop. I'm going to show you at the end of the show. It's coming up for free. And um, we have an awesome musician here in studio with us today. And, um, and we're going to show a really mega super awesome video too. So I need to shut up now and introduce our <laughs> guest. So please help me welcome Melody Marie. Yay! <laughs> That's the audience. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Too funny, too funny. <laughs> so woohoo, woo you made it! I did, finally. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much for having me on the show. I'm super excited to be here. Me too, me so. too. So you have the voice of an angel. I, I think the first, <laughs> now the, oh, the first time I met you was at the, the Exposure concert. Yes, yes. And you, it was just weird, we just kind of like backed into each other the way we ended up meeting. Yes, yes. But when I heard you, you opened your mouth and just like heaven came out. <laughs> it Aww. was amazing. I'll never Aww, forget it. It was you. really, wow. Yeah. So have you always sang? Yes, yes. I've been singing since um, I could. And uh, the story goes, there's a story behind my name, Melody. They don't call me Melody for nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom actually had suffered a horrible miscarriage oh, gosh. before me. And when I came from her womb and I was crying, she said it was music to her ears. So she named me Melody. <gasps> and how ironic is it that I, you know, sing and love music 
and wow. I'm a music teacher and oh my gosh yeah so <laughs> I mean I kind of have the jack of all trades going on right now so wow yes wow. yes so when did you start singing? Um, I started singing professionally when I was 15. I actually did my very first opera oh. at the New England Conservatory in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I studied classical music. That's how I kind of learned how to sing. And I actually studied at Longy School of Music in Cambridge. I uh, got a lot of different scholarships and things like that because both my parents were working. So it was very hard to attend extra school and, and teaching and, and getting you know the the vocal lessons that I needed um, but I was very blessed because there's a lot of scholarship opportunities academic opportunities that I applied for and got a lot and some financial Ooh. aid as well mm -hmm. thank God so <laughs> and uh, and here I am today so wow. so <laughs> were you singing like when you were a little munchkin oh yeah I <laughs> my mom actually has uh, videos of me uh, singing Madonna, uh, <laughs> Paula Abdul, all that stuff. It's kind of funny being three years old singing like a virgin from Madonna. <laughs> I had no idea what I was singing and I had the moves and everything. So, you know, I had, a, I guess I was born with this. You yeah. know, I love it. I How love doing wonderful. it. Wonderful. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So when did you start your first band or when did you decide this is what I'm going to do? Or like, how did you know how how did you know what you wanted to do? Like, did you want to go into opera? Well, I think what happened was I started writing my own music and I did that at 16. So I started my own, own chick punk rock band in Massachusetts and it was oh, cool. I know we were all chicks and it was great and we were young in the bars in Massachusetts and my senior year in high school we actually played the house of blues in Cambridge oh. Massachusetts in front of we had a sold out show Wow. And what was awesome is my drummer now or back then Sarah is actually a professor at Berklee College of Music Oh, so my I gosh. mean, go figure. Um, and then we had moved to upstate New York, so the dream of having the band kind of subsided. And then I was in and out of bands a lot, and until um, I kind of felt good with Surrender Reality. I had met some great musicians, and we started writing music immediately. We all immediately kind of clicked, and um, it's been it's been a great experience. We've been around for four years. Well, that's super awesome. I know. <laughs> It says something. Wow. No, so, how did you come up with that band name? Well, you have to do a lot of research because each time we came up with something, we were like, okay, let's see who has this one. And then we would go and research it on Facebook or Google or something. And they're like, oh, no, that band has this. This band is in Florida. There's that, blah, 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 blah. And um, I always liked, you know, when you're listening to music just in general you are surrendering your reality you kind of space out a little bit because you get involved in the music and that's what I wanted people to do when they listen to surrender reality and listen to the songs I want them to get lost in the music I get it now. yeah surrender reality so yeah, surrender reality so bit. instead of I'm, I'm picking up the kids today I got soccer I got this or I have whatever the case maybe I have work it's like just lose yourself in the music Surrender that reality. Surrender that just for the three minutes and 53 seconds of the song. <laughs> <laughs> Take those three minutes for yourself and, and get lost in the music. And that's how Surrender Reality came about. Wow. I love that. <laughs> I'm so happy that now we know the backstory. Yeah, I know. Not a lot of people do. So You heard it here. Yes. Yeah. Right here. Because you can. <laughs> With Suzanne. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Wow, wow. Let's see. Um, so can, can we talk about the video for a minute? Sure, absolutely. I'd love to. Okay, so the song is called Scars. Yes. What's it about? Um, this song I wrote uh, three years ago, and honestly, it was my cry for help because I was in a really rough relationship at the time, and I didn't know what to do because there's so many different risk factors when you get involved into a domestic violence relationship. You know, there's kids involved, financial. You can't just get up and leave when you work a, a part-time job. You know, you wanna make sure that I'm safe, the children are safe. Um, it was a very, very rough situation. So the song Scars was my cry for help. And um, we had actually recorded it um, in Niagara Falls at the Music Lab, and it didn't work. It mm. just didn't work. It was one of those songs that actually got X'd off the first EP. 
and I was so sad. I was like devastated. I was like, come on, this is so sad. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, when you're in a band, you know, there's those executive decisions and, or, you know, the majority rules. And I unfortunately um, did not win that argument. Mm. So, um, I decided to redo it, and I worked with Doug White over at Watchmen oh, Studios. Yeah. Hi, Doug. Hey, Doug! I love you. I love Doug. <laughs> he is the man. I love him so much. Seriously, he's been he has been a blessing to me because he helps run to reality, keep going, and um, allows me to keep uh, expressing myself through music. So he, he is, is a gem in he, Buffalo. Yeah, he really very is very highly thought of. Yes, I love Doug, and. Um, I, I sent him the song and I said, I want to revamp this song. What can we do to revamp it? And he's like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. So I come in and I listen to the song and I'm like bawling my eyes out in the studio. I'm like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> it works. It's great. And then I laid down the vocals for it and everything. And uh, now we have a song. So. Oh my gosh. Um, and it is. The song is actually about domestic violence. It's about um, you have those scars you know, from your past. And it's hard to not have those scars come into future relationships sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's tough, mm -hmm. it's a tough thing to do. And it's a learning experience as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, you gotta do the best you can. You have them, you learn from the experience. And I'm hoping, um, especially in the video, that, that, you know, it touches somebody and they seek the help that they need. Just like I kind of reached out to you in my crisis and mm -hmm. my time in need several times. And, uh, and you were there for me every single time. And I'm so blessed for you. Thank so you. Blessed. And so that, blessed. That's, that's my calling. That's what I'm here to do. You know, I didn't go through 22 years of that to not do something about it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, I think um, I'd like to share that video if we may. Can we yes. show the video on our show? Yes, I would love to show the video. All right. Okay. This is like, this is the big reveal. This is awesome. So, so this is, well, you can introduce it. Okay. Hi, I'm Melody from Surrender Reality, and I bring you the video, Scars. Hi, I'm Melody Marie from Surrender Reality. I bring this music video to you to spread awareness for domestic violence. For every 60 seconds, 20 people fall victim to domestic violence. Below your screen right now is a number to call for you to seek help. There's also, if you go to www.loveshouldnthurt.org, that is the local Buffalo chapter. You can seek help. You can get the help that you need. The video that you are about to see contains graphic images. This is my story, not from my point of view, it's from a separate point of view, but I wanted to shed light on this because it happens all the time. Thank you so much for watching, enjoy the video.
Wow, that was intense. Um, it's tough to watch, honestly. It is, um, especially because it's so prevalent. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think it's, it's really awesome that you've done this because it needs to be, we need to shed more light on it. And I'm interested to hear why you did it from the man's perspective. I did it from the man's perspective because it's so stereotypical of the female who usually um, actually gets abused. And it's very ironic because when we were planning on the music video and doing the story line with it, I've worked actually with, I wanna just give a quick shout out, Amir Skalanja, he was the director of my music video at Foxtrot Productions. So thank you so much, Amir. Um, when we were planning out the storyboard for this, you know, um, I had met someone myself and um, he actually was in a situation where the woman would actually beat him. Mm -hmm. Very uh, different, which prompted me because I was like, okay, you know what, we're gonna do it from this point of view. And um, even though it, a lot of the similar situations in the video actually happened to me, mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of skew the point of view because it does happen a lot to males as well. One in six. Yeah, it's crazy. That yeah. One in six males. Yeah. That's a high number. Yeah. That's a really high number and it's scary. And uh, I'm very thankful. I want to just give another quick shout out to everybody in the video. Lori, who has been in all three of my recent music videos. Thank you so much, Lori. To Morella, who um, uh, played the abuser in the video. And she's sweet, by the way. I just want to <laughs> let you know, she is a sweetheart and she is single. <laughs> she is single. <laughs> um, giving her a shout out. And Greg. Greg did a fantastic job. You know, I came to him. I actually met him at an expo. And I said, I must have sounded like a complete total wacko because I was like, you know, you would be great for my music video. And luckily. We're going to beat you up. <laughs> and by the way. <laughs> and then we had Nicole to uh, Nicole Scalanja, who is Amir's wife, who was in the video as well. So they did a great job acting and, and really getting it. And when I first watched the video, when Amir sent it to me, it was very hard to watch. Mm -hmm. it was very, I actually cried. And a lot of people's first reactions is they cry. And they're like, whoa, that's intense. But I really wanted to shed light on this because I feel like um, it gets pushed aside. Guys think that, oh, they're macho, they're tough, they can handle it. And no, mm -hmm, no, it's mm -hmm. wrong. You do not put your hands on anybody. Right, That's right. That's the bottom line. I don't care who you are. Exactly. You keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Unless they're to hug <laughs> each Unless other. Unless you're, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the good touch. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> the good touch. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is intense. Um, but it is so important to shed light on this and, and, you know, it, it happens just like you said to men, to women. It doesn't matter uh, who you are or what walk of life that you're in. It impacts you. And just think, one in four are women and one in six men. So if you just think about the, your coworkers, your family, the people on your block, it impacts. Everybody knows somebody. If it wasn't you, you know somebody. So thank you for referencing Love Shouldn't Hurt, um, which is uh, a nonprofit organization that help, we're run by a three- volunteer a three-member volunteer board of directors and we are actually expanding and we are looking for a brick and mortar facility to open up in and have some transitional housing and fill in the cracks for the agencies that um, the pe people who need help don't meet the criteria criteria um, we're looking to serve the underserved <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very necessary and very needed so what are your future plans? Future plans for Surrender Reality. We keep going. I love doing the music videos. And what I've noticed is that each time that we come out with a song, um, and we have a music video for that song, um, the views go skyrocket. The last two wow. videos skyrocketed by doing it this way. And, um, and I'm so blessed because this video already less than 10 days that it's been on YouTube, uh -huh. um, T over almost 21,000 views. <gasps> 21,000. Oh I my mean, gosh, I got chills from that. That's crazy. And, wow. I, and that's just through social media. That's here, here's this. 
you know, see, you know, that I'm, I'm trying to shed light on this and people are sharing it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. And believe it, and you know what's great, Susie, is I've had people, friends that I didn't even know going through stuff like this, sharing their stories with me, thanking me for doing stuff like that, for shedding light on, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> it that's, though. And that's why I did it. That's right. why I did this. This is why I wanted to get that message out there. And yeah. I'm hoping that I can help just one person. You know, there's the hotline in there. There's the love shouldn't hurt. You've helped me a great deal get through that horrible time. And I'm so blessed for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that somebody reaches out and they can get themselves out of the situation. You you can you can get yourself out of the situation you deserve a good life life is way too short to be in just in something like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you can that's why you're on the you can show yeah exactly because <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah, i lived um under somebody else's foot for 22 years so i pretty much gave up on myself and so you know i've walked that walk and i can talk that talk i can bust every myth why we say that we stay why you shouldn't um but this show's about you. No, <laughs> so oh, no. I don't want to get into that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great, though, because that's actually what helped me. Your, your posts, your positive posts every single day, all those things kind of helped me get to the point that I needed to to get up and finally leave. Yeah. And, um, and I'm so... I feel like I'm indebted to you, honestly, and I thank you for spreading that positivity. And I'm hoping that we can we can change just one person at a time. Yeah, that's the way it works. Absolutely. Because so many people, like I did, like you did, you feel like you're all alone and nobody else understands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so when you see just even passively somebody's post about something positive, you're like, oh, what? What? Mm -hmm. What are they talking about? And then it's like, oh, and then you might look at some more posts and maybe yes. their website, and then you might reach out. So I am very aware that, you know, maybe 4% of people reach out to me. So there's 96% of people who are impacted and they're just not there yet. Right. And I understand because mm -hmm. you know, the magic number is seven for the number of times that somebody will leave and either be killed or leave and stay out of that relationship. Because that's the only comfort zone that we know. It's the familiar. Yeah. Even though it's not healthy, it's yeah. familiar, and we feel that nobody else will understand. Mm -hmm. And they know how to push our buttons. They will make themselves cry, and they'll say, I know what I did wrong, and we'll go to counseling, and all this. They say everything that you want to hear. Absolutely. And you want to give the benefit of the doubt, so yep. you go back, and then you go through the honeymoon phase, oh, and yeah. slowly everything starts going through the quicksand <laughs> before you know it. Yep. Been so, there, done that. I know all, and you, I mean, your story is very inspiring in and of itself, and uh, which helped inspire me to get the help that I need to get out of that, that toxic relationship. So, and now it's nice because, you know, you can pick up on those clues too. Right. You can pick up on the clues. It's like, oh, he said this. Oh, that's, that's a narcissist. Oh, right, that's, yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? So it's like, and it's not that you're overcautious. No. But it's those same word. It's like the same sentence. Yeah. You know, right. that they all use. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. Guy, Nobody girl, else can matter. ever love you the way I love oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's the that's best That's okay. One. We don't want anyone <laughs> no. to. No. We're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, um, how can people find you? We are on every single social media site that's out there. If you go to facebook.com forward slash surrender reality official. Uh, we are, you, there's an email, srealityband at gmail.com. We have Twitter, uh, which is uh, Surround Reality Band. Um, you can get in touch with us. We have our own YouTube channel as well. Uh, so visit the site. We have more than one video. Uh, we actually have four official music videos out. Awesome. Already in four years, which is fantastic. But I'll be honest, the last year, since working with Foxtrot Productions and, and Amir, um, it's really cool to put the music video aspect to the songs. Yeah, it is so a whole nother dimension. It, and it really, it's bringing the song like to life. Yeah. And it's and it, it's a different, it, it's a different Different way of looking at things and I absolutely love that so actually it hasn't even been a year and we released three music videos oh my gosh it's insane how it's cool insane. is that though <laughs> it's fun it's a lot of fun and I'm having fun so Excellent. so Melody Marie yes. surrender reality yes. and thank you so much for being here thank I you. have a couple things I wanted to share with you and now um, if you have ever been impacted by domestic violence and it doesn't necessarily need to be physical you have to understand there's lots of ways that this can impact you it could be mental it could be emotional it could be financial psychological sexual 
any one or more of those qualify. If you've ever been victimized, let's just put it that way, there's a free workshop coming up. My good friend, Kathy Sudori, is a Krav Maga instructor, and she's moved to Amsterdam, but she's coming back to Buffalo twice in August. So there's a workshop. It's Krav Self-Defense for Women Survivors Only. Learn how to strike, kick, and defend yourself. Now it's happening at the Apple Tree Business Park, Wednesday, August 9th from 6 to 9, or Saturday, August 12th from 11 to 2. There's no fee, it's completely free. You don't need any experience, but you do have to register. So the registration deadline is only a couple days away. It's August 5th, okay? And you can reach out to Kathy and register by calling uh, the number on your screen. It's 716-491-4723. And there's also an email address on there as well. And I'm gonna be there and I hope to see you there. So she's gonna be coming back each month to teach this wonderful three hour free workshop if you've ever been victimized. So I hope to see you there. And again, that's at the Apple Tree Business Park on Union in Chictawaga. All right, and guess what else? In my last minute here, I came out with my first children's book. So actually the first book was supposed to be about empowerment and happiness, but just as fate had it, I wrote a story in fourth grade called The Lonely Roller Skate, and I went to put it on paper to submit it to the publisher, who will be on a future episode, um, called Imagine We, LLC, and I put the pen to paper and a whole different story came out. So The Lonely Roller Skate will come out later, but this is the story that I came out with, and it's called Nikki's Creativity. Oh. And uh, I bet you don't see any resemblance with the purple curls there. I, did, <laughs> I illustrated it myself. One picture was done by my son, Joey. So Joey's name is also in the credits. And this is about a girl who is creative. She just creates so much, but she always gets in trouble for her creativity. Um, I've done each one of these things and gotten in trouble. So, <laughs> so this is kind of my story. Mm -hmm. And um, you can buy it on my website if you're interested, um, SuzanneSucan.com. And... Um, I'm really excited about that. So if you're interested, you can get it online and I'll be happy to sign that and get it to you. So that is all the time we have. Thank you to Melody Marie from Surrender Reality. Thank you for having me. And I will be back next week, will you? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week on the You Can with Suzanne Show. Bye everybody. Bye. Woo